Let's think about induction in a solid object. To get started, recall the motional EMF. To see a motional EMF, we had a field in the plane of the board. And remember, we had to have a stationary track, sort of, with a slider on top of it. And if we did that, then if we pulled the slider out with some velocity v, took a force to pull out, we would actually feel a force pulling it back, f. So to maintain some velocity, you have to apply a force to counteract this force. So we don't want to redo all that. Just reminding you, that was motional EMF, where the object is actually moving. And we said we really need this to move, because if we just have a, a wire loop moving in this uniform field, there'll be no induction, right? because nothing, nothing would change. The, the B field flux wouldn't change. Well, there is one way to do it, actually. And that is to have the wire loop exit the uniform field. So if we actually define it this way and say this field is uniform over on this side, but the field, so here say it equals B naught K hat, where K hat is into the board, <coughs> but on this side of this boundary, <coughs> it's equal to zero. So if we do that, then we can say, okay, we have a wire loop and we're pulling it out of the field. So to pull it out of the field, then you have your flux changing. So let's do Lenz's law to think, let's see, if we're pulling it out of the field, the B field flux this way is decreasing. So we want to apply, it or we'll have an induction current that increases the B field that way because it always opposes the change. So if that's the direction of the B field, uh, the current would go this way. And then you could apply the QV cross B force and realize that obviously it'll, it'll always oppose your motion. There'd be a force that way, pulling it back. So all that would happen. Very exciting. Now, what we want to think about is what if we use a metal plate instead of a loop? That's really all it takes to think about this. So let's see, let's have our magnetic field in to the board, just like before. Let's have our imaginary boundary, or on this side, be a zero. On this side, we actually have a B field. And now what we're going to do, instead of a loop, let's drag a real object, a real thing here. It's a big, whopping chunk of metal. Cross hatch it to make it clear. That's a solid, heavy thing. Right? We're going to drag this big piece of metal and pull it, give it some velocity going out of the board, or out of the B field. Well, basically, the same thing will happen. The current, you could imagine, this big piece of metal is a bunch of little wires, wire loops all stuck together. There's no reason that you wouldn't still get current flow, and it'll flow in the same direction. And that current flow in a solid object is called an eddy current. It's called an eddy current because like in water, an eddy current is usually a little swirling uh, current, and that's what happens. There's no specific path of a wire loop to define the flow of charge, or the flow of the current in a circle, it just swirls in a circle sort of all over the place. So that's where the name eddy current comes from. It's, let's say, the flow of charge in a bulk material. The flow of charge in a bulk material due to induction. We can also realize then, so it's hard to really do any detailed calculations of eddy currents because the flow of the charge and the current is so complicated, you can't really define exactly what it looks like. But there is one thing you can quantitatively think about is you can figure out how much energy you're dissipating. Because eddy, eddy currents, due to Lenz's law, they must do this, eddy currents 
oppose motion and dissipate energy as heat. So in this case, if you really had to do work to pull this thing out because it's feeling a magnetic force pulling it back, the work that you do would be converted into heat in the eddy currents because you'll get a big current flow in here, but the material has some inherent resistivity in it, and that's where you'll lose your energy. So eddy currents occur all the time. Sometimes you like to have eddy currents. They're used in braking. Sometimes you don't want eddy currents. Sometimes you'll have laminated materials, and they laminate them. They put conductors between uh, layers of insulator so that to limit what the eddy currents can do. In this case, you want it laminated this way. Because if you limit how big these loops can be, then you'll limit how big of an effect the eddy currents can have. So just so you'll see it, I'm going to show you a couple of examples of eddy currents opposing motion.